Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco. Coming up, Spyderco fixes a classic with the Military 2. I have the Devo Knives Growler prototype in hand and the best grab-and-go fixed blade knives, Knife Junkie Edition. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back. My favorite comment from this past week was a comment left uh, in replay on Thursday Night Knives. It was from Hollywood Tactical, a good friend of the show. And he said, oh my gosh, OMG, finally, someone pronounces Big Leiter correctly. And he laughs. And uh, Big Leiter is German. I don't know what it means, uh, but I can just see from how it's spelled. And uh, I took German in, in high school. So I just presumed that I was pronouncing it correctly, but it's good to hear from Hollywood Tactical that indeed I am. And it makes me think of this time uh, way back in the 80s uh, during a snow day in Cleveland when uh, when the snow was too deep to go to school, you had call trees and parents would call other parents and those parents would call other parents to let everyone know that there was no school on that day. And my mom uh, on her list was uh, the Nagy family, N-A-G-Y. And she called up knowing that it's a Hungarian name and that in Hungary it's pronounced Naj. And so she uh, <laughs> she says, is Mrs. Naj there? And they're like, sorry, wrong number. And she's like, no, it's Naj, N-A-G-Y. And the kid was like, it's Nagy, lady. And so we never let her live that down, you know. So uh, that's one of those little family things that you just hold on to forever. And uh, if ever you're losing in a fight, you can always bring up the Nagy incident. So uh, Hollywood Tactical, thanks for the comment. Made me uh, <laughs> Made me go back. Okay, so what am I carrying today? Uh, here's the pocket check for today. I was carrying something that uh, recently was re-released in a new fancy schmancy version. This one is the good old, I don't know, Gen 1 or 2 XM24 Bowie. This is from, I don't know how many years back, uh, but I bought it on the secondary market, say, five or six years back. And uh, at that point, it was, it was long in the tooth. So I think this was one of the first runs of XM24 uh, back in the day. It's got pretty uh, unimpressive action. Uh, this was definitely not built for action. Uh, it was built for strength, stout sturdiness, and dare I say beauty. That Bowie blade is just stunning. Now, uh, with that thumb swell on the back of the blade, it gives you the impression of that Mac V Sog double-peaked Bowie look that I'm so very fond of, but it also gives you a really long swedge, which not only is pleasing to the eye and lets the whole Bowie shape express itself fully that the three and a half inch XM 18 does not, in my humble opinion, but it also that long swedge gives you a lot better penetration if you were to use this in some sort of uh, thrusting manner. And uh, if you look at it, you've got full thickness pretty much up to the tip. So any anything helps and a long swedge and clip would help in that in that uh in that role i'm sorry for that brain freeze uh and i added a um aftermarket i think this is rc blade works aftermarket um scale here so you got linen micarta black linen micarta with an inlay of burlap and Love those two colors together. Love that on this knife. And this is a great knife. I don't carry it enough these days. Uh, there was a time when that was a pretty much a daily carry. It is big. It is heavy, uh, to be sure. Um, but uh, so I had that. I also had, as a fixed blade knife, I had my new Fred Perrin neck knife. Uh, this is a, a mid-tech uh, of his, one of his self-defense designs. He does uh, forges his own blades. He makes his own blades, stock reduction and forge. And he also um, makes little picks and little other implements of pain and, and you know, self-defense that are really cool. It was fun to lurk at his table, excuse me, at Blade Show and talk to him. Um, his, uh, his, you know, he's not the most fluent in English, but way more than I am in French. So we spoke in English and uh, he, he certainly knows the language of self-defense and violence in English. And it was really interesting to talk to him. Just a 
guy with a whole different set of life experiences. And uh, that's where a lot of these knife designs come from. Uh, he posts frequently on Instagram walks he takes in the country with his dog, and he'll show uh, the little weapons he takes with him. And frequently he'll have a small uh, clip point blade like this. And uh, I really like this one. This uh, is made by Max Knives. And then I believe he puts the handle on and uh, sharpens it. So mid-tech in that regard. Really nice little thin super slicer. I mean, this thing is really sharp and thin. It just slips between the atoms. Uh, lastly, on me, speaking of slipping between the atoms, I had the uh, little bro Jack from Jack Wolf Knives. And as always, I got to I got to open and close this in front of the mic because of that walk and talk. So pleasing. This uh, of the three, I have uh, the three that are have been released thus far. They are all impeccable builds, beautiful designs, perfect execution. Uh, I think this one has the stoutest walk and talk. And um, uh, I really appreciate it. And it also makes the knife feel so solid when it's open. As with all slip joints, I don't care how strong it is. You can push it down with your thumb a little bit. Um, but really, what, are you ever using the spine of this knife? No, you're using the edge and therefore you're you're applying pressure against against the lock. So you don't really have to worry that that, you know, if, if you're using this properly, you don't have to worry about the fact that it doesn't lock. Uh, just a beautiful knife, uh, the classic boys knife in dimension and look uh, with some slight tweaks by Ben Belkin, owner and uh, proprietor designer of Jack Wolf knives. He has a he's a connoisseur of the type and he has a sprawling collection of custom slip joint knives and he distilled out all the finest qualities and, uh, and put them into his, his knives and they're hand they're they're made uh, overseas and all they're all hand finished and you can really tell when you get these in hand. Flat at the half stop. Everything about these knives is just cherry. It's very sweet. I love it. Sorry, sorry for using cherry, uh, and it's not a Camaro that we're talking about. Uh, but so this is what I was carrying today. Oh, look at that! All clip points. I think I'm breaking some sort of a rule, but hey, it's summertime. I'm wearing my my white pants. All right, so we have the uh, XM24 Bowie. We have the uh, by Rick Hinderer knives. We have the Fred Perrin Mid Tech, also a Bowie, and then we have this clip point boys knife called the Little Bro by Jack Wolf Knives all clip points. Uh, I will repent somehow. Um, tomorrow I will carry all crazy and different blade shapes to make up for it. All right. Uh, let me know what you were carrying. Just uh, drop a comment down below or call the listener line 724-466-4487. And let me know. Always love to find out what you guys are carrying. It helps me. It helps me. I am not a maven, but I like to surround myself with them to find out what the latest and greatest is. Also, if you want to find out the latest and greatest and get extras on your interview uh, uh, intake for the week, go to Patreon and sign up. That's one of the, the perks of being uh, a member over at Patreon is that you get uh, interview extras. Uh, things we, uh, I think I'm going to start calling it off the record. Uh, Knife Junkie off the record. And uh, there we talk about things that either don't make it into the podcast or maybe Maybe they're too risque to bring up in the main podcast. So go to Patreon and check it out. See what uh, see what you're missing. Uh, it's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon, or you can scan this QR code here. Just go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Okay, so this knife, uh, this is the Spyderco Military. My dad, when he decided he needed a, a tactical knife uh, years back now. Uh, this is what he got. He got himself one of these. My brother incidentally had one, and I incidentally had one, all in black. I sold mine, bought it back uh, from, from my good buddy Ian. So this is a storied knife in my, uh, in my life and in, in the family. We all have one of these. I love it. I love the military. I love everything about it except for the fact that you can never, you could never swap the clip. Well, I'm here to tell you 
that uh, Spyderco has finally come out with the military too, and I am excited. This is actually a Spyderco I am quite motivated to to acquire. Uh, just like when the Yojumbo came out, I I really want to get this. Uh, so the military two is taking all of the cues from the paramilitary two that has been such a crazy success ever since they made it the number two and they uh, got rid of the lockback and did all the things uh, to make it what it is today. So they've done some of the things, same things here. Uh, if you look at my knife, this is the old one, uh, the standard military up until now. If you look in the choil area, it's kind of rounded off here. And then it uh, sort of graduates into this um, choil. If you look at the new one, it looks a lot more like the paramilitary too. It's a, it's a, a, a square, not squared off, but uh, a full scoop 50-50 choil there, uh, just like the paramilitary too. They've made it so that, uh, so that's going to be more comfortable when you're choked up. It, it's going to have a feel more like the paramilitary too, more of a full choil than a rounded off neutral area um, and a half choil. So you get that uh, you get the option, the four-way option. So they didn't just uh, move the clip uh, from the one uh, right side tip-down orientation. Uh, they moved it to all four corners. So now you can carry it any which way, which I would have preferred. <laughs> well, hey, you know, I'm not looking at gift horse in the mouth. I don't like all the holes all over the place, but hey, uh, you know, I'm, I'm willing to suffer through it. So now you have an option to carry tip up. Thank you. Took you long enough, but thank you. And I don't mean to sound like an ingrate. And then, then they put the compression lock on it, which is, I mean, to me, that's very exciting because the compression lock is a great blade, uh, great lock. It's very strong. It's fun to fidget with. It's fun to use. And on a bigger blade, it's even better. So I definitely look forward to getting this uh, military too, probably on the secondary market. Um, why do I say that? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I have a feeling it, it might be expensive and I might balk at the price of buying a new one. I don't know. That that seems to be the trend with production knives for me lately. Uh, but I'm very excited about that. Thank you, Spyderco. Um, th this, this is a great knife. Just a little backstory. Uh, back in 96, uh, Sal Glesser was asked, if your little boy, Eric, back when he was uh, you know younger, uh, ever gets uh, drafted and called to war, what knife would you want him to carry? And he designed this four-inch military. And from that came the paramilitary two, or the paramilitary, the paramilitary two, and of course the paramilitary three. Is that what they call it? The little one? That is what they call it at this point. I think originally it was not called the paramilitary three. I think it was called something else. Anyway, happy about that next up hea designs took the hunter which was a very um unique clip point blade very futuristic looking design and they've released a uh, uh a second go at it a second incarnation of the of the hunter and this one is a much more i will say sober design it has uh the basic um footprint in the handle though though the um uh, the pommel is markedly uh, convex, where the old one was concave, and the same can be said about the blade. The uh, the uh, the initial, the original Hunter, which you can still get, uh, Boker makes a version of it. If you don't want to spend HEA design money, you can get the Boker uh, version of it. Very cool design, um, but it's a front flipper with a radical sort of clip point up front. Uh, well, this one is very toned down and looks much more suited to EDC with that drop point and uh, and that sort of uh, uh, relatively neutral handle. It's a, uh, a titanium frame lock. It's got a, a nearly three inch blade, 2.85 inch blade. That's 154 cm. Uh, or you can also get it uh, in. Wait. Uh, yeah, you can get it in. This is the chief. Uh, version of it and you can get it in s35bn the first one was in 154 but just a really cool uh design i think um i i think the old one is more dramatic and more interesting and fun to look at but this one to me just seems like a a, a more practical and classic design maybe something that won't go out of style as quick uh sam abdul rahman i i got a chance to meet uh, and shake his hand uh near the artisan booth uh this this year at blade show it was cool to meet him um very nice guy i really enjoyed talking with him on the show here so it was uh like many others it was very nice to finally uh, press the flesh uh so 
very happy for him and the success of his company and very much look forward to getting this in hand. By the way, this this hunter has a um, a fully uh, sculpted titanium pocket clip. I forgot to mention. So check that one out. Still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look. Uh, look at a couple of new knives in my collection one a new knife in my collection two others on loan that are very exciting and then we're going to look at grab and go uh, fixed blade knives this is a continuation of last week's grab and go folder collection these are a little different and i will explain why all coming up on the knife chunky podcast and now that we're caught up with knife life news let's hear more of the knife junkie podcast Okay, so when I was at Blade Show, this is how a lot of stories are going to start. Uh, I met the guys at Devo Knives, uh, Kevin, uh, Kev from Lefty EDC, and Colin, um, his his uh, design partner. Colin uh, Maison Pierre is uh, CM Knife Designs, and he sent me their new prototype. This is the Growler, and. Uh, they're they're staying beer themed the first one was the stout that was cool we had that here on the channel a little while back that beautiful uh sheep's foot bolster lock very nice knife well this is a new one um and this prototype in particular is from kubi and they did a beautiful job this looks like i'm not sure if it is i have to find out but it looks like cross cut um uh, canvas micarta they have the devo knives logo right here on the um, pivot which i really like it's subtle it's a nice looking logo it's subtle understated and it also avoids billboarding on the blade which uh was not all gunked up i used it to open up a package uh yesterday and it man it, it really uh, okay so this is a very tall what is it almost an inch and a half tall blade and that's almost fully flat ground it's a thin blade stock so it is really a nice slicer. I could see this being a good picnic knife uh, or or food knife uh, because um, of how it places the edge compared to your knuckles, um, but also how thin it is. It has a sort of a chef's knife uh, geometry, really thin and slicey. But I do appreciate that it's got a, a, a just north of center line point. That point was very useful. Uh, the package I was opening was a... Um, one of those horrible padded envelopes that doesn't have the air bubbles in it. It has the 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 crap stuffed between two walls, uh, uh, like little <laughs> little uh, I don't know little little balls of paper, uh, the kind that when you cut them open make a mess. Anyway, uh, that tip went right in, really nicely uh, punctured. So I like a blade like this that is very edge and belly oriented, but still comes to a tip. I always like a pointy tip. That's why I'm not too fond of the of the cleaver genre. Uh, I miss the tip. Very nice action on this, as as might be expected from Kubi and also from Devo Knives. Really, really nice action. Uh, I find myself wanting to finger flick it the most. Uh, I do not put my fingernail in there like I do on some knives. This one is all about the fat. Just get the fat in there the fat of that finger and just dislodge it from from the detent ball and it will fly open the action is exquisite um it is a big opening hole and that allows you to easily slow roll it say you're in the lunchroom at work cutting up an apple you slow roll it like that uh but you're uh you're in the bar and you want to show it off you flick it like this uh hence uh you know the the bar theme has to do with the with the beer with the bear theme. Uh, you probably should not be opening up knives in the bar. I will say that. That's my disclaimer. Uh, very, very nice knife. I dig this a lot. I like that they supply a lanyard hole for those of us who like lanyards. I do. It is small and understated, but I like the shape of it. It's a nice, uh, it's a good shape. And I also appreciate a, being able to put a lanyard on, but I also appreciate taking them off. I'm always that on again, off again with the lanyards and the fobs. And it's nice to have not too giant a hole there. But when the uh, 550 cord is through there, it's nice to have a snug fit so that it's not flopping around, rattling around. That's just my personal taste. Um, so this is the Devo Knives Growler. I know that they got prototypes from, I think, 
QSP as well. I can't remember who the other OEM was. Uh, and and that one turned out a little different. I got a chance to to try them both out. And the other one was a little bit thicker, if I recall correctly, and just had a different build, just different feel. Uh, really, I like this knife a lot. I really dig that blade. And the handle is nicely neutral, very comfortable. Uh, it gives you a lot of options to choke up or to be back on it. And, uh, and it's comfortable and simple. Very nice knife. So this is the Devo Knives Growler Prototype sent to me by uh, Colin Maison Pierre. He's the design half of, or the, you know, the CAD half of Lefty EDC and, and his knife company, Devo. All right. So uh, what's up next? Next is another loaner. This is on loan to me from my good buddy, Jock, across the pond uh, over in England. He's a Scotsman in England. Uh, is, did I say that right, Jock? Anyway, this is his, and uh, he sent it to me to check out first before sending it along. It is a Knife Center exclusive of an outrageously fantastic knife, uh, the Demco Knives 8020. This one in a beautiful blasted titanium with a 3V blade. So, man, they just went all out on this. This is the Ultra. This is the Ultra. Uh, I almost hesitate to grip this with my left hand because I'm afraid my wedding ring will leave a snail trail. I do not want to send this to Jock with a snail trail. I got to say, the action in the titanium handle, the weight of the handle, just, oh, man, it makes the action feel so much different. Hear this. Here's my uh, standard version with the face only a mother could love blade, uh, the, the, the shark's foot. Um, still love it, uh, but that just the feeling is so much different because the the handle is so much lighter with that grivery. I really like this. I'm not going to change this one because uh, it means something to me, but uh, I want to get, I want, I really want to get this right here. <laughs> I love this incarnation of this knife. It's perfect. I love the Demco clip point blade. I have that on my 8020. Uh, just one of the best clip points uh, in my to my eye. And then everything else about it. This one actually looks like a shark. Something about it. Everything about it looks shark-like. Something interesting is that you can get a lot of replacement scales for this version, the original version. But if you look at this exclusive uh, tie handle version, the pivot is much larger. They have the, the Demco pivot on it that you see on the 8020. So it's pretty large. And it's a totally different aperture than the pivot hole for the the standard. So don't don't buy this and then get aftermarket scales for this, thinking it's going to fit. Um, that might be an that will be an issue. So you have to look specifically for aftermarket um, scales that will accommodate that large pivot. Man, such a cool knife, Jock. Thanks again for loaning this to me. I'm going to shoot a quick video of it and then I'll send it your way. I promise. Woo, to talk about a, a, a good um, candidate for a, a leather fob. This would look smart with a leather fob, I got to say. Even though they're kind of annoying, <laughs> they look cool. I don't know, something about them. It's like a stamp of ownership. Okay, last up uh, was an unexpected uh, one, but it was in my, uh, it's been in my bit, my Amazon bin forever. This This is the knife that came in the annoying envelope that I opened up with the Devo Stout, or with the Devo um, Growler. Okay, so this is the Voyager XL Cold Steel with the drop point blade. I call it a barong because it looks just like a barong. Uh, that's the sword over my shoulder that I always talk about. Uh, beautiful leaf-shaped blade. You've got a full belly. The thing is one continuous belly. If you look at the uh, sharpening choil area and then trace the line of it, uh, it's never going exactly straight. Uh, and then you have the top curve. So it's it's leaf shape in general. I've, I always wanted this. Uh, it was in my Amazon bin. And then I got a uh, notification that this was the, the price had dropped uh, to the point where I was like, well, it's irresponsible for me not to get this. The people need to know the people need to know. So I got it for you. I got this for you. Um, if it's incidentally, coincidentally, if it's beautifully into my collection of XL uh, cold steel folders. Um, geez, so just such a coincidence. Uh, so now I feel myself ever since a couple of weeks ago when I did 
uh, sort of inexpensive essential folders and I showed the four inch clip point Voyager ever since that I've been into the Voyager back into it. I haven't been in a long, long time. And, um, well, so this popped up and, and so it was all, uh, meant to be, I really dig this knife. If, if by chance you need an XL knife and I think you do, I would, I would make an argument that even if you, uh, do not have one, don't have a collection, aren't interested. You still need one XL folder from Cold Steel, and I'll tell you why. Because uh, it is a great option to a fixed blade. If you don't have the room for a fixed blade, but you want something that becomes large and uh, and very versatile uh, in a smaller package, you can get one of these for 60 bucks. throw it in your bug out bag, and, and all of your knife needs are taken care of from large to small. Because with this knife, you get, first of all, that triad lock is the super, super ridiculously strong. Um, and you get a number of grips here. Let me go to this wide shot here. You get a number of grips with this handle. Uh, you can choke all the way back on this pistol grip. And and if you have a lanyard you can wrap around your wrist, you can use this as a chopper because you've got uh, a nine-inch reach here. And uh, because that's a five-and-a-half-inch blade, you got a nine-inch reach, and you can get some hewing done some light uh chopping you can move up the blade and uh you know use it in different hand holds all the way up to choking up here using that jimping and using that little platform there so this is a very versatile knife and it could take the place of having a couple of knives in your bug out bag so that's my that's my sales pitch for the voyager xl uh of course if you want to spend more money and get into a more luxurious xl knife uh that can be had with uh fancier editions with g10 and polished aluminum not in the voyager series but in the espada series and and like that but just just for utilitarian purposes i highly recommend these they're super strong and they have a number of different blade shapes uh to suit your needs so uh, cold steel voyager xl all right so that is the state of the collection um i'm uh i'm very happy with it i like the way uh things come and go it's feast or famine and this this was a nice this was a nice snack, if you will, because it's always nice to check out uh, knives that I don't have um, that I can borrow and keep for a short while, use and check out and send along. Uh, so thanks uh, to you, Jock, and also to you, Colin. All right. So next up, I want to talk about grab and go fixed blades. Last week, I talked about uh, the Jared Neve inspired grab and go folders topic. That is a knife uh, when you don't have time to linger over the knife case. What am I going to carry? What am I feeling? What's my knife mood today? You just got to grab a knife. You got to get out of the house. Uh, that's what we talked about last week. Well, this is the fixed blade edition. And as you might imagine, uh, for me, it's a little different uh, because I love uh, tactical. I love fighting knives. That's kind of my aesthetic, if you will, to quote my daughter. Uh, but it is um, so so that sort of determines my fixed blade carry to a large extent. Um but also, that is also the area where I dabble the most in custom or handmade knives. Now, the one thing I will say in this list of 10, there are, I'd say uh, there, are, there are four production knives and six custom knives. None of the custom knives exceed $250, except for one, which exceeds it uh, by, uh, by half. So, uh, so th though there are customs, they are all pretty much readily available, pretty much. Uh, and are not the the they're not in the same uh, uh, level as custom folders, which tend to be much more expensive. Okay, all that being said, my first grab and go. This is perfect for utility, perfect all around knife, uh, even food, even I even wager self defense. Uh, even though I know that did not factor into its design, and that is the Steingraber Performance Knives or SPK Shark. Uh, this one is in crew wear. I got this on the secondary market when I, uh, you know, I had, um, I had him on the, on my show and, uh, he's, he gave me a special email like before this dropped and I missed the email and I missed out on, on a run of his knives and it always bummed me out. And then uh, I found this on the secondary market in crew wear and bought it. And I just love this knife and have bonded with it. Now, uh, Alex Steingraber really specializes in. A number of things. He has a very scientific approach to 
he had a scientific approach to learning knife making through fixed blade knives. And now he's been using that same approach to figure out frame locks, uh, titanium frame locks. And his beautiful Lamia, his new frame lock knife, is just a stunner. And it, and it takes a lot from this DNA. Uh, uh, crew wear in a thin stock, ground super thin and laser like. This is a very, very uh, thin behind the edge, very, very sharp. Uh, glide through any material kind of knife. This is one of my uh, classic all around uh, cardboard slayers. And I said before, great, uh, it could be a self defense knife. It, it's It's got a very neutral handle. So when held in reverse grip, it feels excellent. Um, so, so I feel confident wearing, uh, carrying this knife. I say wearing this knife because I do wear it on the outside. This is the one knife I carry scout style on the front. So I don't know if that's scout style. That's, I guess, on the front horizontally. Um, it's it's overall length hides under the plume of my pirate shirt. <laughs> no, under the plume of my shirt. So I really like this knife. Definitely a grab and go. You could grab this one, have nothing else on you, and pretty much take care of anything. All right, that's the Steingraber Performance Knives Shark. Next up, this is the... Um, Ooh, that was my stomach. <laughs> this is the priciest one of the bunch, uh, but possibly my absolute favorite. Uh, this is the Voodoo from uh, Eric Kramer Custom Knives. Uh, first of all, a great sheath. That's uh, all of these have in common is a great sheath. And the one that came without a great sheath, I made a great sheath for. So that is, uh, if I forget to mention it, these all have excellent sheaths. This one is... Uh, uh, got my carta handles is a clip point uh double-edged clip point now he doesn't sell this double-edged i requested it and that swedge is so shallow that when you put an edge on it it's not a paper cutting edge it's more of a gouging tearing splitting edge so it's like a you know uh for pressure cuts you know if you're using this knife to trap and you have someone trapped behind that, and then you pull up, it's going to split. Uh, but that edge, uh, the main cutting edge, is very thin. It's a hollow ground blade. It's on a thin stock. The handle is thin. Everything about this is easy to carry. It's very svelte. It's a, it's a good, it's 154 cm. It is a good utility edge, though. Um, I will do whatever I can to not use it for that. This is, uh, I think of it more as a self-defense implement. Um, and like I said, to me, it's a clip point. To Eric Kramer, the maker, he calls it a Persian. So who are you going to believe? <laughs> uh, I, I'll believe him. It's a Persian, but to me, it's a clip point Persian. Love this thing. Um, and a big part of it is how thin it is. It really nestles nicely. All of these, uh, with a few exceptions towards the very end, get carried in the three o'clock position in the waistband. Um, and most of them have the discrete carry concepts clip on them because that's my favorite. Okay, next up is a um, custom, well, it's a it, it's a sort of quote unquote production run from a custom knife maker. This is Hogtooth Knives. This is Matt Chase. And this is that beautiful EDC Tonto I carry a lot. I carry this thing a lot. It's the perfect dimensions. It carries so well. Uh, a lot of it has to do with that rounded handle. Uh, the handle is perfect for my sized hand. I can get a full four finger grip on it, but nothing else. If I were to use this in a in a fight situation, um, say I'm fighting with a very well trained Filipino uh, fighter who knows all the things I know, and this is of course this is all fantasy land. But what I'm saying is, uh, there are a lot of ways you can disarm theoretically disarm a knife using the pommel the part that's protruding from the back of the hand. If you can, you know, if you're in a, in a tight sort of grappling uh, scenario, this, you cannot get that. So this of course is useful uh, theoretically for me, it's useful because if I'm carrying this, the, the handle is so short and so rounded off that it doesn't poke my ribs when I'm sitting in the car and it doesn't interfere with my uh, spare tire you know, it's just very soft and neutral, very nicely chamfered and just the right length that I can get a four finger grip and nothing more. Uh, but if I am holding it in reverse grip, 
um, to you know say thrust through a 55 gallon drum containing Uzis. I got I got this good grip that I can bear down on on the back with my thumb. So this is a great knife. Um, uh, I tell the story that I was carrying this uh, incidentally carrying this uh, whilst trying to make feather sticks with a bunch of other knives that I brought out. Oh, I'll bring all these, you know, this one has thin geometry. I'm going to try this one with feather sticks. And it was just, you know, that kiln dried wood that you buy at the grocery store to do a family uh, fire pit. And I was having difficulty with every one of them. I was, I was worried because they were all folders. I was worried that I was going to, I don't know. It, it seemed like really tough wood and I didn't want to jack up the pivots or anything like that. So I ended up pulling this out and with the hollow grind and that, and the really thin edge, you can see it's a tall, uh, tall edge there. It just, oh my God, it was like butter. It, this made incredible feather sticks. Uh, I'm not sure if that's what you would consider this to be the main purpose of this is a kind of an all-around utility knife i think of i think it tends more towards the self-defense uh but that's just my lens through which uh, i look at things but incidentally it's a great little sidekick camp knife um i i am one of those people who thinks that tantos could be very useful in the woods <laughs> but i am not a woodsman so i can't tell uh maybe maybe it is that you put a stick on the other side and then you have that straight blade and you can use it as a draw knife i guess you could do that with any kind of blade but that straight blade that straight edge seems like it could be useful in a survival scenario i don't know i've gone way off the rails with this this is not a survival knife but you could definitely turn it to that again 154 cm tumbled acid wash and then a very interesting handle material you've got a maroon g10 with alternating layers of a sort of rubber like material so it's just ever so slightly grippy you can barely detect it but it's just enough and uh i really like that you got the g10 pins just a handsome knife that's sort of a production thing that uh matt chase of hogtooth knives who just got his journeyman smith uh certification congratulations matt um this is one of those kind of things he does as more of a production i think he has them water jetted out and then does all the grinding and everything else uh so that's the hogtooth edc tanto Next up after this swig of delicious coffee is the Bright for War Quaken. Josh Mason, custom knife maker, had him on the show. I've had a lot of these guys on the show, actually. Um, yeah, most of them. All of them, <laughs> except for Cold Steel. All right, uh, but we'll get to that later. Uh, so this is the Quaken by Josh Mason. He does different sized uh, knives. Now he's doing a knife just like that's this that's larger. He also does an Americanized Tanto version of it. You see that I have it set up for neck carry. This actually works great as a, um, uh, as a neck knife. It's just light enough, uh, but also just sharp and sturdy enough. This thing is a work of art. It's beautiful. All right, let me show it off. So it's a quaken shaped blade. What he does with these knives is uh, after he cuts out the profile, he zero grinds them. So he, he, he takes this all the way down, a full flat grind, all the way down to a super sharp edge. And then he dulls that edge and then, and then creates the sharpened edge from that. So it's really, really thin behind the edge, wicked sharp. Uh, this is 1095 and I have started a patina on it. Uh, which I might reverse at some point because I, I've decided I kind of miss his maker's mark. He's got a beautiful maker's mark. It looks like a, a, a five-petaled flower, and it says uh, uh, J. Mason under it. Um, but he goes by Bright for War. It's a, a, a quote from a book. I can't remember which one. Um, I think it's George or, or maybe not. I'm not sure. Uh, but beautiful hand-wrapped... Um, handle he uses uh this this is a um same wrap i believe they call it um but this is ray skin under there and then he does the japanese traditional japanese lace wrap where they cross in the middle and twist around and uh and then soaks it in epoxy and it has this intense grippiness i love uh these kind of handles because they have those alternating peaks and, and it's essentially like finger grooves. Your fingers really 
melt into the side there. And then and then he did this uh, Turkish knot on the top. Is that what it's called? Turkish knot, I think. Uh, just a great little knife, wicked sharp, kind of like a little little scalpel. It reminds me a little bit of that knife in the man, the movie The Man Who Wasn't There. Great movie by the Coen Brothers in black and white with Billy Bob Thornton and uh, James Gandolfini and uh, and uh, Francis McDormand. Just an awesome movie if you haven't seen it. One of one of the lesser celebrated movies by them, but there's a scene where someone gets murdered by a little knife and uh, and it was a little knife that was brought back from World War II from Okinawa, I believe. And it looked a little bit like this. Um, and so that's all I'll say about that. But that's what this knife reminds me of, kind of an obscure um, reference. So do I go all the way with that patina or do I hit it with some flits right now? I think I'm going to go all the way with the patina, see how it looks, and, uh, and double back. A great food knife also, by the way. Uh, the only thing is, is you got to be careful. It's kind of nasty. You don't want to get food up in that, in the lace work there. So you got to be careful. All right. Next up is from BGM knives and uh, John Miller, who is just blowing up for his regrinds and his custom knives and his custom knives really, you know, he has a bunch of different models or you can come to him with, uh, with things you want to do and, so reasonable and this guy is so known for his incredible grinding skills incredible and this is one of them right here uh this is this is directly uh i saw that he had a knife exactly like this on his website and i said i want it exactly like that i want that that goofy zombie green and the purple handle i love the way that looks and uh you know a gray sheath um the steel itself i got uh 3v and got it hollow ground and you know so i pulled out all the stops um i prefer the lace to his um to his uh just g10 handles i mean they're nice his g10 handles are nice but i like the cord wrap as i mentioned earlier plus it's thinner it allows you to carry it next to your person easier now when he crosses center line with his wrap he doesn't twist it over so that it does not create the same sort of uh tall peak you get from the twisted uh but beautifully ground very very thin and oddly enough uh when i got this um it was not at the edge super sharp i i dragged it across my um ceramic rod a few times and it became insta laser so much so that i very badly cut my my forefinger i had a, a band-aid on there for i don't know like a week and a half. And that's a long time. I usually heal up quickly. Uh, I'm ra rather Wolverine like in that way. Uh, but so this time, uh, this time, not so. And that's because this thing was so sharp. It, it cut very, very deeply. Uh, I like to carry this in reverse grip, all of them reverse grip, basically. So when you draw it with the right hand it comes out like this. Um, just a nice clip point. He calls this the Quaken. To me, it looks more like a clip point, but hey, man, who are you going to believe? Um, it's his knife. <laughs> well, it's mine now, so I'm calling it a Bowie, a clip point. Uh, BGM knives, check them out. So many cool, beautiful models. Uh, very, very good at what he does, and he's a young guy, very talented. Check out BGM knives. Also, got a regrind you want? Look them up. I got a couple I got to send him uh, to include my ZT0640. I think it's time. I think it's time. All right. Next up is one. It's brand new. Uh, I've only had it a week and a half, and um, but it's already in the rotation. I know it's going to be um, one that I carry a lot, like the uh, reminding me a bit of the Kramer Custom Knives Voodoo, just in how easy it carries. That's this one. And uh, that was my Blade Show pickup. Um, this is the 1558 Knife Company Revere. Uh, 1558 Knife Company. 1558 recurring to Corinthians, I believe. 1558. And uh, it's a knife company owned by uh, master bladesmith Josh Fisher. I had the pleasure of meeting him and his family and his daughter, who uh, uh, at 12 or 13 just passed her journeyman smith uh, certification, which is pretty amazing. And uh, looked at his really beautiful knives. He had a couple of hand forged knives, and then couple a couple that he makes that are more uh, readily available. Like I was talking about how uh, 
how Hogtooth makes this EDC Tanto. Um, this is a similar kind of thing. So he makes batches of these and it, it's a gorgeous recurve, recurve clip point. He calls it a hunter. I, uh, I, to me, it's a, it's a fighter. To me, it's a fighter, of course, because that's what it looks like. Uh, but if you're a hunter, I suppose it looks like a hunting knife. But to me, um, it has just that beautiful recurve profile is just all business. But it's got such a nice thin handle. And if you can if you can see it's sculpted, so it's thicker where I'm pinching. And then it uh, it thins out towards the pommel and then flares at the pommel. So it's got the from from this aspect, it looks a lot like a larger fixed blade knife with that with that touch um i gave showed this to a number of people who who all said immediately is this a winkler and i thought huh uh, to me it doesn't look like a wink i know why they think it looks like a winkler it's that long clip point to me though uh you know it's just obviously not but it doesn't it, you know the recurve and the thinness and uh but yeah i guess i guess maybe uh in a in a similar universe uh in terms of design um I opted, he had beautiful leather sheaths and I should have gotten both. I should have just spent the money and gotten both sheaths, the leather and the, um, the Kydex. I'm sure I could just go to his website or call him up and buy a leather one. But uh, I chose the Kydex because I knew I wanted to carry this and the Kydex is rubbing in an annoying fashion as Kydex will do. You know, it's already stripped some of the, I don't know if this is Parkerizing or what this is. Uh, I knew that, I know that this is 52, 100, uh, steel though and micarta just a great knife nice and thin carries nicely uh draws in the reverse in the reverse grip nicely and then with that recurve gives you a chance for slashing in the reverse grip i tend to think that slashing in reverse grip is kind of something for the movies or something if you're in a phone booth with someone or an elevator i mean it's like very close in um you know if you're going to want to slash you're going to want to be far out so um, in any case, that recurve gives you some hope uh, if you need to use your knife like that. Heaven forbid. All right. Next up, uh, speaking of which, uh, this this is kind of a knife that's uh, definitely self-defense oriented, but has great utility um, qualities. Just not the way I have it set up. Uh, this is the Tops Rapid Fire. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not Rapid Fire, Rapid Strike. The rapid fire is an off-grid knives knife. This is the rapid strike. I have modified it a little bit, and I also opted for this. Is one of those knives that you can buy from Tops with or without the top edge sharpened. Of course, I opted for the top edge sharpened because why? Why wouldn't you if you have the option? Such a great little knife. Now, if you got this thing without the top edge sharpened, would this would make an outstanding um, utility knife? really really good because you have a lot of reach at at uh, about four and a half inches one two three or about four and an eighth one about four and an eighth inches there so you got a lot of nice reach uh it's slender and fits anywhere um when you when you first buy meaning you can stash this knife uh it it, it hides away nicely here's the sheath um i added this from a different tops knife but um, so it, it stashes away nicely. You've got jimping all the way around the handle, uh, but it sits nestled underneath. So when, you're, when your flesh sinks in there, when you grip it tight, you can take advantage of that jimping. But if not, it's not annoying. And then you have full-on jimping there. Um, that little bolt is to, is to get it to stay in the kydex sheath uh, because there's not a lot of meat around the ricasso. And then these four grooves on both sides, I added myself because I ground down the top now they they make this knife part of its utility is that it comes to a diamond point here uh as a glass breaker it's fine uh, i just didn't like it uh because i thought of this primarily as a self-defense knife and would be carried like this and it wasn't comfortable to put the thumb over uh so also that little point was just long enough and pointy enough that it would stick in my ribs when I sat down in the car uh, because I carry this at three o'clock or three thirty, four o'clock on my waistband. And it just wasn't comfortable. So I made it comfortable, made it my own. 
and uh, this this is definitely a grab and go knife. I have used it for utility, but I have to say having that top edge sharp does make me nervous in using this uh, just as a an EDC. All right, that's the tops racket rapid strike. The next one is one that I keep in my cart. The next three are grab and go, but they're not necessarily ones I'm carrying on me. Uh, these are grab and go in three different scenarios. First one is my dedicated car fixed blade. And that's uh, the cold steel roach belly. Now, this is a knife that you can now buy. I remember I bought it for 13 bucks. You can now buy it for 20 bucks with uh, uh, you know, on Amazon or, or what have you. And it comes in a different sheath. It's a great, great knife. Okay. Um, it comes in a different sheath. This is a Kydex sheath I made. This is a knife I bought initially to test out my Kydex making skills and to, to learn about Kydex. This was one of my first sheaths. It remains one of my best. <laughs> I used the thin six mil stuff and I really liked it, especially for this uh, light knife. Uh, another reason I bought this knife, besides its being inexpensive, is that I knew a guy who bummed around the country for about a year. Uh, at least he had been doing it for a year when I met him and he was camping mostly. And this was the one knife he had was a was a uh, cold steel roach belly. And I remember he said, oh, my one knife is a cold steel. I want to show it to you. I was so excited. He was the cousin of a friend and he was staying downstairs from the apartment I was staying in. So he was hanging out in our place and he was, oh, let me show you. And he pulls out his backpack. You know, he's been living out of for a year. And I'm, I'm hoping to see, I don't know, a trail master Bowie or something. He pulls out the roach belly and I was like, oh, cool. But inside I was like, oh. But he proceeded to tell me how great this knife was and how it was the only knife he had, the only knife he used. I think he had a Swiss Army knife, too. And how it just did, did the thing. He used it for kindling. He used it for everything. He, he slept with it, made him feel safe. Um, so I bought it, and I really like it. It's, it's based on an early, um, early American uh, colonialist design. You can see the little musket there. Um, just a just a great utility knife and to me um just a great all-arounder it makes me feel safe to have close by you know it's a five inch blade it's well jimped uh you've got great purchase on it i i did my own sort of jigging pattern in this and then i wrapped it uh not too long ago with jute twine and then i soaked the jute twine in shellac and i got that nice gold color and it's it's just really stout. It's a great grab and go knife for 19 bucks. So I've shown you a $400 grab and go knife down here with the, with the Kramer custom knife all the way down to a $20 grab and go. This thing is, is awesome. The sheath that comes with, I can't vouch for, uh, when I got this, they were all shipping with these nylon pouch sheaths that were just barely adequate. Um, now they send them in these boxy looking plastic, you know, sheaths. Not, not sure about those. I'm sure they're fine. Uh, but if you want to learn how to make Kydex, that's a good knife to do it on as well. Okay, penultimate grab-and-go fixed blade knife is the one that uh, lives in my backpack, and that's my EDC bag. I carry to and from work or whenever I'm going anywhere, uh, you know, errands or whatever. I take it with me just because I have so much crap in there. I'm like, I could... I could fare well uh, if something happens, even though I have a get home bag already stashed in the car. It's something I rely on. Anyway, the knife I've had in there for years has been this Walmart purchased SOG seal pup. And this is back when they were making them in OS six, but I scored one in. Yeah. OS eight. Uh, so that's what this was. This one was OS eight, especially back in, um, in the day when I got this, Walmart was almost selling exclusively the OS 6 version. I don't know why they had an OS 8, but I got one. Uh, it came in a great, comes in a great sheath, a big a Cordura sheath with a giant pouch on the front that you could put a, a um, utility, a uh, uh, Leatherman in or something like that. But I also got this uh, Kydex sheath. This is before I was making Kydex myself. Uh, pretty good. It'll do. I uh, got this on there just in case. So there have been many times when I've been at my office alone uh, on the weekends and just because I'll grab this, stick it in my belt and, you know, it's a big empty building and there is reason why people would sneak in there. So there are reasons why people, I don't know, 
So this is just something I've had on me many times. I like this little notch here. It's for putting cord, channeling cord in there and cutting in case you uh, you, you, you don't want to pull the knife out, but you still need to cut something. Uh, with that, you need to keep your knife razor sharp to make that work. But this OS 8 is not difficult to keep sharp. You've got that beautiful classic Mac V SOG profile on the blade with the two peaks, the two humps there. I just love the look of that classic blade. And I like how SOG knives has kept it alive. Um, yeah, that 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 fire was dwindling for a while, but I think they're they're uh, on their way back. And I think they've done a great job reinventing themselves. I just never want this stuff to go away. Their fixed blades are what I like best about SOG by a mile. Uh, this one has the uh, half serrated blade. That's a great thing to have for survival. Um, you know, this knife does not have a super steel, but it and is not a crazy build, but it really does get used and, and uh, it gets used by professionals. Apparently I, I have heard here and there that this is a, a preferred knife, even though it's not super fancy or, is it, or expensive. And that's probably why, uh, but you have that serration there, those serrations there for when the rest of the knife gets dull, that will still be able to cut through stuff, especially tough, um, you know, tenacious material like rope and that kind of thing. Um, so just a great all around fixed blade knife. This is one of those knives I would, I would recommend if you don't want to spend too much and you're a, a folder collector, but you think as you should, that you should have a fixed blade knife in your collection. This is a, when I bought it 40, it's probably 50 or 60 bucks at this point, but this is no matter what it is right now, it's money well spent. It's a good knife to have around. So uh, a good one fixed blade knife to have. All right. Last up is a grab and go knife that is for that we grab and go when we go on vacation. Uh, I started this two years ago, I guess, and now it's become tradition. Every time we go somewhere, um, usually it's somewhere with a kitchen. So we take this. This is the uh, off grid knives Grizzly. I have <laughs> I have it with a little in the waistband carry thing in here, but that's just to put it on a belt if I needed to put it under a belt. Uh, but this thing, this Grizzly is such a great knife. Uh, it is a big, broad, two inch wide almost fully flat ground os eight very thin blade this is a camp kitchen knife and it excels in the kitchen i will tell you that so uh when we go up to our little mountain cabin um in the it's actually called a villa how do you like that it's a villa when we go up to our mountain villa in the uh summer we take this because the knives there it's it's a timeshare the knives there are crap and so we bring this and uh we, you know we spend a lot of time cooking and take pride in our food and uh, there's nothing worse than sawing food that you've just spent money on that you're going to prepare lovingly sawing it with like a dull old ginsu so bring this sucker along it's os 8 which is great in the kitchen sharpens up quickly has a great edge does well against a, a, a wooden uh, cutting board or bamboo cu cutting board. It doesn't dull too quickly. You've got that big broad surface for scooping up your ingredients to throw them in the in the pan of olive oil or, or what have you. And then, as I mentioned, it's a camp kitchen knife. This is also a pretty tough steel for just whacking against uh, small pieces of wood. You need to make kindling. You need to make fire sticks. You need to do little camp chores. You need to like uh, Take little limbs off of a, a sapling. Maybe you're making a trap for dinner. I don't know what you're doing, but uh, this is great for all those kind of chores. It's kind of machete-like in thinness and profile. And um, yeah, just one of my favorites. I love this thing. I wonder what this would be like in 1095. Uh, would that be better than OS 8? Because uh, 1095 is a tougher steel. It might, it might do better in the machete camp chores but still do great as a kitchen knife, especially if you if you do the sort of treatment this has and and sort of treat the blade, blade coat the blade in a way uh, that protects it against the elements. Um, yeah, so this is the Grizzly. This is a, a grab-and-go knife for vacations and camping. All right, so this is my fixed blade edition of the grab-and-go fixed blades. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited to, to round the corner with this and tie up this loose knot. Now, now you know. Uh, I'm not going to do a grab and go uh, 
a slip joint edition because they're all grab and go. All right, let's uh, let's rattle these off. We got the Steingraber Performance Knives Shark. We got the Kramer Custom Knives Voodoo. We got the uh, the old here. I'm going to use my. We've got the Hogtooth Knives Tonto. We've got the Bright for War Quaken. We got the BGM Quaken. We got the 15 uh, 58 Revere, the Tops Rapid Strike. We've got the Roach Belly coming in at 20 bucks by Cold Steel. We've got the Sog uh, Seal Pup for a great bag knife. And then grab and go on vacation. Great knife here is the Grizzly because you can do your camp chores and you can do your kitchen chores all day long with that beauty. All right. Thanks for joining me on this journey. And be sure to join us on Sunday for Phil Harvey. Phil Harvey from England who makes those gigantic antic folders you've seen uh, in Dirk Warning's collection videos. Uh, I talked to him, charming guy from across the shock. And then also be sure to join us uh, next Wednesday for another supplemental. Tomorrow night, you know, that's the Knife Junkie, uh, a Gentleman Junkie giveaway. And we're giving away the uh, Red Dawn Edition Enforcer by Off Grid Knives. That's the three, um, three and a quarter inch version. What a great EDC that is. Join us then and also join us here, uh, all the podcast apps, so you can listen uh, while you're doing the stuff you got to do. All right, for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, I do implore you, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.